I'm Aisha Siobhan. I'm Zara Mazeffer. And welcome to Owlcast. Where we get to know your fellow Foothill community. I'm Melissa Carey. I'm the director of the show. I'm Aaron Hurley. I'm playing Franklin Hart Jr. The terrible bad guy. Um, the, the wonderful terrible yes, bad guy. Yes. <laughs> Can you guys tell us a little bit about like how did you get into acting, directing? Like how did how did you guys get to this place? Oh well, since I'm as old as the Pleistocene era, I've been doing this for a long time, and I started out as a performer, and I started out doing classical music, so I did opera, and then opera led to uh, musical theater, which led to theater, and then uh, over the years I've started to be very interested in. Uh, Directing, so I've, I've gone and done some training in and about that. So now I do a little bit of each in the course of a year. So that's my story. Aaron? Uh, well, I started, I mean, with school things from a very young age, but what really, my secret that really put me over the edge was that when I was in third grade, went on a school field trip to see uh, Alice in Wonderland at Children's Theater, which was great. Field trips were always great. But my thought was, wow, this is great on a field trip. And then looking at all these kids on stage thinking, they're also not in school today. <laughs> I need to get in on this. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Which is totally why I did. So I got all the information, <laughs> took it to my third grade teacher, and then I auditioned and did five or six shows with that children's theater company. This was back in Florida where I was growing up. And, uh, and then it just, I realized that I loved it for more than just getting out of school. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and so that I kind of haven't stopped since. It all started as a scam. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to give us a little like rundown of the show? Sure. The show is based on a film um, of the same name, and um, they, they decided, mm, probably starting about 10 years ago, maybe even a, a little more than that, to take this film and turn it into a musical. So they went back to um, the woman who wrote the songs and was in the movie, and that would be Dolly Parton. So Dolly Parton uh, wrote the entire score, so it's, it's an adaptation of the film, but now we've got music throughout, and so all the characters have their own personality and they have their own songs. Uh, and uh, it went up on Broadway about 10 years ago and had an okay run, um, and has been seen regionally a lot, and I was looking for a show uh, after last year's show, which was Sideshow about conjoined twins, also a very female story. Um, it's, it's Women's History Month after all in March. Um, and, but it was, it's a very serious, it's a very dark story. So I thought, oh heck, we need a comedy. Heck, do we need a comedy. Uh, so this was very, very focused on the, the journey of these women through to empowerment. Um, and um, unbeknownst to me, during the course of the past many months, this particular topic of sexual harassment has blown up. Um, and so now here we are doing a musical, a comic musical, um, that is really relevant to what's happening today. So that's how. Interesting. Yeah. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your character? Uh, my character is the president of Consolidated Corp, who uh, it's the, the show takes place in 1979, so it's a period piece uh, with mustaches to match. And he is abusive and uh, just sexist as can be from top to bottom. If there's a way that he can say or do something in a sexist manner, that is what he will do. Um, and yeah, so he is just terrible to all of his employees and None of them like him. Of course, he doesn't know that. Right, of course. He he's, thinks... he's clearly not woke, as you know. <laughs> as they, um, no. But in, for this time period, he's just doing, he's just what being him. him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so now with our 21st century eyes, we see Franklin Hart in a pretty different way. Um, and we really, really quickly start rooting for these women to be able to have a little bit more power uh, in their personal lives, but also in their personal So I just going off woke. Um, we kind of talk about that all the time as uh -huh. college students, especially female college students. So, do you feel like that concept 
brought will bring people to watch this show or um, specifically that word I'm not sure but that's what exactly is happening in this show and it's pretty interesting that when they when they set this film in the late 1970s and okay yeah that's a long time ago for people in your age bracket my age bracket not so much um, <laughs> um, but they are dealing with issues that are we're still dealing with you know how long is your lunch break do you get um, do you get daycare at work? It does. Do you get the company supporting your rehab? So all of, so how much has stuff really changed? You know, the woman in the office who actually ran the office wasn't getting credit for it because she was the woman. So by the end, of course, um, it being a comedy, there is redemption uh, for the women and a, a just reward for our very own Franklin Art, um, handled in a comic way. But it's interesting that um, the politics of the workplace uh, haven't changed all of that much uh, in uh, the ensuing years. And we see it not just, of course, in the corporate office, but whether it's the film industry or in politics. You know, when you, we look at the number of representatives we have in the, um, the House and how many senators we have, it's so disproportionate. We're still dealing with this petty inequality. How is that even possible in 2018? So here we have this fun, fun show that's just reflecting all that same stuff that we're dealing with today. So I hope so. I hope so. Plus they get to hear a lot of really great tunes and we have an amazing cast of singer actors in this show. So, uh, And it's also super funny. Like, it's, I remember, I was a little kid when this movie came out and I remember my parents talking about certain jokes that are still in this show, which is crazy to me. Like as a, you know, as a kid, as a you know, elementary school or whatever, I, don't, I remember my parents with some of these jokes, which is, so it's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so can you tell us about, like, what it was, what was it like, what is it like to direct a show like this um, and, you're, you know, like, dealing with these issues? What was, what was your experience like? Um, that's a great question because, really, if you try and superimpose you know, some sort of political agenda, it's not going to work. What you have to do is you have to take the piece, and hopefully you've picked a good piece, and I, I think this is a pretty good piece, and if you do a really good job with telling that story, with using your actors in all of these moments to point out how, how, how much inequality there was, um, then you've story told in such a way that the message gets through. So I don't have to really billboard um, just how sexist and chauvinistic um, Franklin Hart is, we just got to do a good job with the script because the script is already doing that for us. So a good script in the hands of good actors, that story is going to get told. And then for you, what was it like playing the sexist, chauvinistic it's, kind of antagonist? It's interesting. I'm so fortunate that um, many of the women that I have to harass in the show I've actually worked with before. So there, there's an element of like, they know me, so it's mm -hmm. a, a step away from that. Um, but it's interesting, and it's hard. There's a, it, in some ways, there are parts of it that are the hardest acting things I've had to do. Like, <laughs> I played the dentist in Little Shop you know, years ago, and he's sadistic and terrible, but it's so cartoony, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's an easier bridge. But this is just close enough to real and mm -hmm. just, and the and the setting is much more realistic it's a real it's an office i mean yeah sure it's an office in 1979 but it's not that different uh that it you do have to kind of turn off certain things and just you know trust trust your director trust the script and mm -hmm. trust that the other actors aren't going to take it personally once the curtain goes down right his job is to say be a good girl and get me coffee that's because that's what it says in the script. So, you know, I know Aaron would not <laughs> say that today, but the character has to say that because mm -hmm. we need, we the audience, we need to get what that world is, which means he's got to go for that moment, all those moments, every one of them, full out, so that we see just what it was the women were dealing with, the women are dealing. With. Um, can you guys tell us about the rehearsal process? Any key moments, any funny moments, anything that you want to tell us about? I'm sure Aaron will have many to say. I, I always like working on comedy just because it's really fun to discover the timing of it and the moment of it. And, you know, as the director, you think 
within this, that, and that, and if this happens, then that'll happen. But then you, you put that on the actor, and then you see a new moment that you didn't think of because of something they did. So just as they're discovering that moment for themselves as the character, I'm discovering perhaps a new big picture because of how we're working on it. So, uh, And I love working on comedy, and so it's interesting that you have to be super precise in a comedy, and it's not so much that it's a, a, a clown show where everybody's doing whatever they want at all times. No, it's kind of it's kind of really spelled out. It's really clean so that the audience gets this, 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 this punchline, right? So we rehearse to make it really clear so that we get, when the joke lands, it's awesome and it's great. Uh, and it might sound like that takes the fun out of the doing of it, but it's it's you know when you're in great when you're in great storytelling and you're working on comedy, it's just a fun process. And I bet that you have I don't know whether it's being hogtied or yeah we we had the, our hog tying rehearsal a little bit the other day. <laughs> um, and I do, I don't want to do spoilers up. So there's all sorts of crazy things, some which we haven't done yet. Um, it's, it's, it's really fun. I, I always like, I always like in theater to, I'm actually kind of shy and I'm not, so I'm not great at making friends. I'm not going to go up and talk to people. What I love about theater is I don't have to make friends. I make like a family because you're all working on this thing together. And even the people that, oh, that person's kind of annoying because they always want to talk about this thing. When they're not there, it's, it's like your little sister's not there. You're like, oh, well, it's kind of not the same. Uh, and this cast, and every cast is different, but I will actually say this is one of the sort of most familial casts I've been a part of. I mean, we're still in the rehearsal process, obviously, uh, and it's already a very sort of special group, and you kind of can never predict when or why those are, and so that makes it just twice as much fun. I mean, it's a very close cast, and which makes it very trusting. It makes it very easy to do things that, you know, where you're like, you know, in day-to-day -day life would be terrible, but you, everyone knows and trusts each other and is looking out for you and is not going to let you get hurt or do these things, and that makes it just fun every day to, which it has to be because there's a lot of rehearsals. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> when it's fun, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> so we were talking about earlier how you work actually as a web developer, applications um, how does that how does someone from that background end up still doing theater slash well it's actually probably more the other way is how okay. someone who does theater ends up doing that um, I had actually uh, had done theater and things throughout when I was in college I was in Florida and I was mm -hmm. in shows at Disney and I was doing filmmaking work like making my own short films and I was shooting everything on video and video look as good as film and so I was trying to make my stuff look more like that and I had asked around on some message boards for tips and no, nothing really was any good and the software I was using had a software development kit that you could uh, write, you know, that you could write your own plugins essentially and so I started writing some software for, just for myself to make video look more like film and then I started selling that which turned out to be far more lucrative than making films, which who would have known. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Pixar used it in The Incredibles. I mean, it was it actually was quite successful. Uh, and But part of that was that I had to then build a way to sell. This was 19, late 90s, early 2000s. So I built my own e-commerce thing. So that's where I got the web. And then it just became, well, I can get jobs doing that. Uh, but it leaves me flexible to, to have time to be in shows, to be on podcasts, to all those kinds of things. So. Sorry. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give, uh, would you give students who are interested in theater? Um, and, you know what, wait, okay. So, would you, give, like, what advice would you give students who are interested in theater and directing? Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, it would be for you, what advice do you have to students who want to do something, like two separate things? Like, how do you make time for um, like theater, but also web developing? So, two different questions. Great questions. So, um, if you really want to do theater, you're going to have to invest some time in becoming a really good actor. And to be a director, you've got to understand all of the different aspects of theater, in addition to understanding the actor's journey. 
So there's a, there's a, um, to really do it, there's a lot of investment in time. And so you just start at the beginning, like anything else that you want to learn how to do. Um, so you go take, you start out with the beginning acting class, or you take the film, uh, the screen, on screen camera class, or something like that. Um, then you start looking at what kinds of shows could I be in where I'm going to, because you'll learn something from every show. Even the most. You will learn something. Um, so, so, so great, I'm going to go try and get in a show so I can learn more, so I can up my game. Then maybe I'll take some more class here. So everything you do keeps giving you um, a broader skill set, which gives you more opportunities to be in better shows. So we're really lucky here, because Foothill Music Theater, anybody can audition. So we get talent from all over the um, peninsula, certainly, but really the Bay Area. Um, so I've had actors come down from, we've got one in the show right now, coming down from San Francisco, we've got people from the East Bay, um, um, who want to come do our shows because we put on, you know, we put in a, we pull together a pretty good product. Um, so uh, for students here, I'd say come see the shows, so you see what it is, what is this thing that I think, what, is, what are they doing? And then how am I going to start doing that? I'm gonna start by taking class. To get good, you got to have technique. It comes from study. Uh, and one thing that I really like about it is a lifelong study. So we're never done. So every time, even if I'm just the even if I'm just the director, I'm still learning. When I teach classes or I have a new group of people, I am learning how to better tell that story. Uh, so that's my advice. Get in a class, get in more classes, go out and audition for some shows. Um. I agree. Uh, <laughs> but as for the other, uh, yeah, it definitely is a time commitment. Uh, and it can be, you know, and, and part of it is picking the things that you, that, the things that speak to you or that can also help your journey. Like sometimes there's shows that, oh, you know, I'd like to do this, but I've, you know, just done four shows in a row. And I have, you know, a wife and family, and you know, there's, she does a lot when I'm in a show. So when I'm out five, six nights a week for rehearsals or performances, that adds up over months. So picking the things that are um, that speak to you. I like looking for things that can help me do something I haven't done before, get better at a thing I'm trying to get better at. Um, and that changes over time. The things that I'm, you know, where I feel most deficient or most interested in growing uh, changes. And, and then it's just finding Finding ways to make a living. I mean, around here it's so expensive. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of people in this area. Even people who do really well in the arts, it's hard to make a living in this area. I'm trying to make a living anywhere in the arts, but especially here. So I think part of it is realizing that having a day job uh, and doing things like this in the evening is not somehow less than or less valid. I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. balancing all the things we all want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, then I know the people who, uh, who work for companies like Apple and Google who are like, well, I can't do a show this time of this particular time of year because that's when I'm really busy. Like mm -hmm. May and June is our busy time. So I, I never audition or look to do shows then, but I can do them in the winter because we're kind of, you know, it's easier at that time of year or whatever. Uh, and so it's just, yeah, finding those spots where you can make it happen. And every theater company has different rehearsal schedules, performance schedules. Yeah. And, you know, s certain ones have different days off, which make different things easier. We've got an Apple engineer in the show, too. Mm -hmm. He's doing a secondary part, so be luckily, because he's so busy right now that he, just like Aaron was saying, he's so busy that, you know, he doesn't have all the extra hours needed that uh, a lead role would have to be putting in. Well, thank you for sitting down with us. You uh, are welcome. The show, 9 to 5 the Musical, runs March 1st through the 18th at the Lowman Theater on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m., and Sundays at 2 p.m. Just want to get that out there. Working 9 to 5. Yeah, my character doesn't really like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> And to all of our listeners out there, thank you for joining us and stay tuned for our next episode of Outcast.